dear students welcome to another lecture on elements of machine design today we'll see this topic levers the design of levers now you must have studied in physics about levers what is a lever lever is a rigid rod or a bar which is capable of turning about a fixed point which is called as fulcrum it is used as a machine as a simple machine you can say to lift a load by the application of small effort okay so the ratio of load lifted you see if you want to lift a weigh a stone of 50 kg okay you see if, if you need to apply a load of 50 kg then there is no advantage there of that machine if it is a machine it should help human beings so for 50 kg okay if you are using only 25 kg of a of effort or um, 20 kg or 10 kg or 5 kg of effort and we are able to lift uh, 50 kg then you know there is some meaning um, you know to have a machine otherwise there is no point in having machine so so what is the load lifted load lifted should be more and the effort should be less so this load lifted divided by the effort applied okay so load lifted to effort applied this ratio this is called as the mechanical advantage suppose i am lifting 50 kg weight with 25 kg that means i have um 2 is to 1 advantage that means two times okay if uh, you know i am lift i am able to lift load of 50 kg with 5 kg so 50 upon 5 is 10 so are uh, 10 times of mechanical advantage i am having so mechanical advantage is 10 like that so the perpendicular distance between the load point and fulcrum is known as load arm you see you can see here in this uh, diagram you have a uh, lever and the center point uh, here there is a point called as f okay and this is that f means fulcrum and here uh, is the weight acting that this means weight means w is is the load okay so this uh, so from the fulcrum to the load what distance is there this is called as load arm load arm is given by l1 and uh, here we are applying the effort effort means with the help of hand or with the help of foot what we are applying that is the effort effort is given by p and what is the distance from the fulcrum this distance is the uh, effort arm effort arm and it is given by l2 load arm is l1 effort arm is l2 load is w effort is p and f is the fulcrum okay so the perpendicular distance between the load point and the fulcrum is known as load arm and the perpendicular distance between the effort point and the fulcrum is called as load arm okay so according to the principle of moments you see now you know you have three points here here uh, uh, f is the fulcrum the central point about which the uh, the lever tilts and uh, here there is load and here there is effort the distances are known let us apply uh, you know the 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 principle of moments hmm? applying the uh, moments okay taking moments about f okay taking moments f means this is rotating it is in clockwise direction this p is trying to rotate it in anti clockwise direction about f so they see w into l1 it should be equal to p into l2 w into l1 is p into l2 or we can rewrite this if you take p this side it becomes w upon p and you bring l1 this side it becomes l2 upon l1 so this is that is mechanical advantage ma mechanical advantage means what w upon p is equal to l2 upon l1 see w is load p is effort and l2 is effort arm uh and l1 is 
low down. You see, one thing you should remember, mechanical advantage should be greater than one. Then only there is some point in using that, uh, you know, that machine. Otherwise, no, more than the load we are applying effort. But there are certain levers where the mechanical advantage is, is equal to one or less than one. Okay, so that we will see. Okay, now we are talking about, let us come to the types of levers. See, types of levers. There are three types of levers. The first type of lever, the fulcrum is in the middle. As we have seen just now, fulcrum is in the middle, load arm is on one side and the effort arm is on the other side. Okay, so you see here now, in this case, the effort arm is greater than the load arm. This will be longer and this will be shorter. Okay, so the mechanical advantage is always more than one. Such, uh, such types of levers are, uh, are, are commonly found in bell crank levers uh, used in railway signaling. Nowadays, they are putting lights. Uh, you are having red light, green light, and orange light for the trains uh, for signaling. But in the olden days, they used to use, you know, levers. Okay, so bell crank levers they were using. And the rocker arm in internal combustion engines, IC engines, they use rocker arm. See, you can, you can Google, in, you know, IC engines rocker arm. Okay, then you will find a figure of um, rocker arm. Then the handle of the hand pump. Hand, hand pump is called hapsa. Hapsa ka jo pani, uh, se, uh, um, pump karte hai, to uska hand pump. Handle, uh, hand, uh, handle ka hai, Okay, hand wheel of the punching press. The punching press ka hand will be type 1 lever jaysa kaam karta hai. Then the beam of a balance. Beam of a balance means, uh, you know, uh, if they are, uh, you see, uh, vajan kata jo reta hai, huh? beam of a balance, that one. And foot lever. Foot lever means, you know, like you are applying brake in the car or motorcycle or something like that. So that foot lever, etc. These are all first type, first type of levers. First type of levers, what you should remember, the fulcrum is in the middle and the load on one side and the effort on the other side. Okay, now come to the second type of lever. This second type of lever, uh, in this, no, load is in the middle and fulcrum is to one words one end and the effort is to the other end. Okay, so because uh, the distance between load and fulcrum uh, this is uh, called the load arm and uh, distance between effort and uh, fulcrum is called as effort arm. So, load arm and effort arm, if you see, uh, effort arm is larger and load arm is less. Therefore, here also mechanical advantage is more than one. The mechanical advantage is more than one. That means here also there is benefit. The application of such type of levers is found in lever loaded safety valve. You see, in the boilers and all, there is there is something called as lever loaded safety valve. You see, whenever difficult problem things come, new topics, uh, new words come, you put it in the Google and find out what is lever loaded safety valve, how it looks. Okay, now we cannot be, I cannot be explaining everything here. Okay, come to the third type of lever. Third type of lever, now in this case, the effort is in the middle, load is on this one side and fulcrum is on the other side. Now you see L1 has become short, L2 has become shorter and L1 is longer. Therefore, here mechanical advantage is less than one. So, you know, you see to, to lift one kg of load, you may have to put more than one kg, two kgs, five kgs of effort. You see, that is not any advantage. So, this is less than one. Okay. Uh, the use of such types of levers is not recommended in engineering practice. However, there are certain things which are, you know, which are using this type of uh, lever. You see, like tongs. Tongs, what is it? Chimta. Like chapati ko paltane wala jo chimta hota hai. Jilebi ko paltane wala chimta hota hai. Okay. The treadle of a sewing machine. Sewing machine ka treadle. Uh, these are some of the examples. Uh, okay. So, mathematically, if you want to give, uh, the, the figuratively you want to give, these are the three things. Uh, you should be able to draw them. And now let us come to uh, the different. You see, before that, I will show you uh, a video.
fulcrum is in the center, load on one side and effort on the other side. See, this is the class 1 lever. If load is in the center and effort on one side and fulcrum on the other side, it is the second class, like bottle opener. If the effort is in the middle, load is on one side, fulcrum on the other side, it is the third class lever. Okay, now let us see some of the examples of different types of levers. You see in class 1 lever, fulcrum is in the middle, load is on one side and the effort, F, uh, effort, you see the, actually the, here they have written as force, but you know you remember it as effort. Fulcrum in the middle, load on one side, effort on one side. This is class 1 lever. Example is claw hammer. Claw hammer is the key to get out of the way. Look, where the touch is, the fulcrum is. And this is the fulcrum. And this is the effort arm. Hmm. Okay? And uh, in the here again, these pliers, pliers, bullet, uh, pliers. Pliers, uh, see, this is the fulcrum. Here we apply the effort with the hand, and here the load is there, or whatever we are cutting or uh, twisting or whatever we are doing. This is the pliers. So, this is the class one type. In the class two type, fulcrum is to one, one end, load is in the middle. What is in the middle? That is what is important. Load is in the middle and effort is away. Here also the uh, effort arm is larger. Therefore, mechanical advantage will be more. You see, this is a wheelbarrow. Wheelbarrow, bole to kabi kabi cement ke bore wagere jo na khachra uthane ka wagere jo na. Yaha par paya hai, wheel hai, aur yaha par vazan rakte hain aur yaha par apan pakad ke ukar dakhil dete hain. Okay, ye jo hai na ye wheelbarrow, wheelbarrow. This wheelbarrow is an example of the class two type of uh, lever. And the nutcracker, nutcracker bole to tumara wo kya supari kaatne wala jo rehta na. So wo dekho yahan par fulcrum hai, yahan par load hai, aur yahan par tumhe fat lagate ho. Okay. Uh, such kind of thing is called nutcracker and it's a class 2 lever. And in the class 3 lever, force is in the middle. Or force means what? Effort is in the middle. Effort is in the middle. And uh, on one side, fulcrum, the other side, load. You see, now, human arm. You see, your elbow. This is called elbow. Kya bolte marathi mein copper. Uh, this is the elbow. Elbow is acting as fulcrum and uh, this side um, is the effort and this is the load. So effort, uh, effort uh, arm is shorter, load arm is longer. Okay. So there for to lift any load, you know, we are uh, uh, with the human arm, we are spending more energy. And sugar tongs, sugar tongs, bolo to jaisa maine abhi bataya, wo jaisa chile bhi wala ho ya chakkar, chakkar ke jo cubes hote hain, kabi kabi usko utha ke apna glass mein wagera dalte hain. So ye jo chiz hai, ab dekho yahan par fulcrum hai, aur yahan par apn pakarte hain, aur yahan par jo hai load hai, matlab wo cube, sim, wo ice cube ho, wo ya sugar ka cube ho. This is called sugar tongs. And how to remember it? So, you see, there is a mnemonic here. Easy to remember. You see, you remember the word flee. Flee. Okay. So, that means in the first type of lever, so first word is for first. First class of lever, fulcrum is in the middle. F is in the middle. In the second class, L is in the middle. That is, load is in the middle. In the third class, E is in the middle. That means the effort is in the middle. You can remember like that. Okay, now, now come, let us come to the design. Okay, so there are, uh, there is, there, these are the hand levers. Where do you find hand levers? There are hand levers, you can see, you see, in the, you know, many, many places you can find hand levers. You see, uh, 
uh, in the cars hand brake is there uh, that is a hand lever uh, in the in the in the tractors also with the hand you will be uh, hand gear and other things you will be operating those are hand levers okay there are certain hand levers how does a hand lever look hand lever looks like this uh, see there is uh, I see this is the top view this is the front view okay I see there is a see the, these are bearings this is a shaft and this is the reduced diameter of the shaft okay on this uh, this lever is mounted this is the lever this is the lever this is shaft shaft is different lever is this one you see this is broken here this is shown broken means what they say it is not necessary the length is so much only this l length l may be longer okay when you break it with a short break line so because it cannot contain in the paper we show it we break it and show okay see here there is a uh, key this is a key I, uh, I don't know you may not be knowing what is key okay key we will study when we come to shafts design of shafts see here there is a shaft also we'll do a little bit of shaft design also okay but you know the detailed study of the uh, shafts and keys we will come to uh, we will study in the chapter where we study about shafts okay this is a shaft these are the bearings okay and uh, this is the uh, hub or boss this is the hub or boss of the lever okay this actually in circular circular in uh, top view and rectangle in front view means what this is a cylinder okay and it looks like this this the, so here there is a uh, you know uh, a distance of 125 to 150 mm this is where you know um, uh, we can hold it with the hand and we can apply this effort P here you see see that this uh, dimensions are all given this 25 mm here the narrow section and the wider section is 32 you see maybe you know over you know over number of years with experience and with the ergonomics in consideration they have decided what should be the sizes of this see that we are not going to change even the length how much it should be you see these are things we are not going to change what we have to find out is we have to design this uh, lever okay you see what what dimensions are there actually let, let us come from the first okay a hand lever with a suitable dimensions and proportions is shown in the figure let p be the force applied at the handle see force applied means this is effort let this capital p is the effort that we are applying with the hand and l be the effective length of the lever l capital l capital l means from the uh, place uh, where you are applying see actually the hand lever can be up uh, you know we can be holding here anywhere but you know we will take the center of it so from the center to the center of this shaft okay this distance capital l this is the effective length of the lever okay and then this is sigma t will be the permissible tensile stress sigma t this is the permissible tensile strength of our lever now this is our lever lever is made of some uh, you know material like steel mild steel or something or some other material okay alloy steel or uh, uh, such things okay so what is the permissible tensile strength of that steel or that alloy steel huh? that is the uh, tensile strength permissible uh, permissible stress is given here in sigma t and uh, tau is the permissible shear stress for that material you see which of these two will be more tensile strength is uh, more for any material and shear stress will be lesser than that and uh, I asked you one in one quiz question uh -huh, which is more compressive strength tensile strength and shear strength which the highest will be compressive strength for most of the materials then tensile strength and shear strength shear strength will be the least okay that means what easily it can fail in shear then after shear failure tensile if uh, tensile failure is easy and, and failure in compression is uh, you know not so easy that is the meaning okay the diameter of the shaft d you see this is the first step in our design what are we doing we are designing the hand lever now we are seeing the design procedure in design procedure the diameter uh, of the shaft d where is d uh, 
this is the diameter of the inner thing this one this is d you see this is the d diameter of the shaft this diameter of the shaft okay um, uh, see th this is obtained considering the shaft under pure torsion you see actually you just don't worry about anything just remember this formula for the time being when we come to shafts we will know how this uh, equation has come okay this is simply you remember capital T that is torque coming upon the shaft is okay capital K T uh, the torque or the twisting moment that is come on, coming upon the shaft is pi by 16 tau d cube t is equal to pi by 16 tau dq this is the shaft equation it is easy to remember and it's, you remember it because you know so many times you are going to use hereafter also everywhere we are, you know we design a shaft we are going to use this equation so so you remember okay how from where this has come we will see later just for the time being actually because we are actually designing this is a lever not the shaft but anyway this is necessary at this stage so just you know remember the formula tau is equal to pi by 16 tau d cube uh, sorry torque t is equal to pi by 16 tau d cube okay d is the diameter of the uh, shaft and tau is the shear stress okay ah. that is the first step okay so after that the second step is diameter of the boss diameter of the boss means what i uh, see uh, this is the diameter of the boss yeah this is the boss no this is boss so the diameter of this boss from here to here you see this is taken as d uh, till now we don't know what is d1 but you know d2 is this one this diameter anywhere in the top view it is given yeah yeah here it is given and also the proportion is given already it is 1.6 d okay this you know remember this is an empirical relation is it taken as 1.6 times of the diameter of the shaft and the thickness of the boss also is given as t2 thickness of the boss means you know from the shaft to the outer edge you know this thickness this thickness means what actually this is uh, yes this is d2 minus d by 2 that comes to 0.3d uh, even if they have not given we would have found out okay this is the second step you you estimate these two dimensions what are the two dimensions d2 and t2 then the length of the boss length of the boss is this one this one l2 okay now what is uh, why is he using L2? Where is L1? Uh, here, this is the this is the distance L. L means you know from the bearings to the central central uh, the, uh, to this to the axis of the lever. This distance is this is called actually eccentric or the overhang or something. Eccentric or overhang L okay this is uh, l and uh, uh, this is l2 you see uh, i'm not finding any l1 here anyway never mind you see maybe because you know all that is concerned with the boss is denoted by two like a d2 t2 therefore they must be calling this also as l2 okay let us see if anything comes later okay so the length of the boss l2 see this is not uh, i2 or 12 like this or it is l small l suffix 2 okay so this is taken as uh, d or d2 1.25 d this is again the empirical relation so then it may be checked for a trial thickness t2 by taking moments about the axis <coughs> see moment moments about the axis you can check check for the trial thickness t2 he is saying you see here you see load is applied here huh? and at a distance of l so 
this is the uh, no you can uh, the the moment coming upon the uh, upon this uh, shaft okay there are the so the twisting moment twisting moment p into l is the twisting moment uh, of the uh, that is coming upon the shaft to the tearing parallel to the axis see if suppose this is tearing like this this is tearing at this point okay the okay what will be how it will be failing see so that is uh, you know l2 l2 into t2 okay this is the uh, area that will be tearing and sigma t sigma t is the this is the area and this is the stress this becomes load okay and what what distance it is getting applied it is getting applied i say if you see at a distance from this if this is the axis it should be acting somewhere in the middle here this will be this is d by 2 plus t2 by 2 so d by 2 plus t2 by 2 means you can write like this t d plus t2 by 2 okay like this so you can rearrange this and you can find out what is l2 actually l2 is already taken like this okay so in that case you know if you have already know if you already know um l2 then you need not find out l2 again you find out sigma t that means induced shear stress how much is the induced stress like that you can find out and then next step next step is the diameter of the shaft at the center of the bearing you see that you see this is the uh, this is the actually shaft you know there the diameter is more that is diameter d1 here we have reduced the diameter of the shaft where uh, uh, this uh, lever is uh, inserted okay so here anyway diameter of the shaft and we have set it here so then we are calling this as enlarged portion of the shaft uh, 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 where near the bearings near the bearings okay so that's what we are saying now see the diameter of the shaft at the center of the bearing d1 that can be applied considering the combined bending and twisting moment you see bending also is coming and twisting also is coming you see how you see twisting we said you know here the twisting is coming you see um, um, you know because of the effort p on the distance l p into l is the twisting moment okay but uh, you see here is the support bearing means a support and uh, you know this lever is up applied at a distance of l you see this is the line of effort this is the line of effort this is the line of the support there it you see it is not on the same line there is an offset here or an eccentric or a overhang okay that distance is l so because it is applied at a distance of small l here uh, so there is a bending and the bending what is the uh, uh, you know uh, because of what you see here we are applying see in the top view you are seeing it like this means front view you will be seeing here as a dot where i am putting the mouse no at that point there will be a dot so this p is being applied at a distance of small l so the bending moment so the bending moment is p into small l twisting moment is p into capital l okay and uh, when you know like this two uh, bending moment and twisting moment are coming see uh, i told you sometimes uh, when we are studying about uh, stresses bending moment induces bending stress or twisting moment induces shear stress torsional shear stress okay bending moment is sigma b bending stress is sigma b this is tau okay sigma b is a direct stress anything sigma is direct stress i told you and anything tau is shear stress okay these are two different uh, varieties of 
the stresses if it is all sigma stresses we can add them if we all tau stresses we can add them but if it is one is sigma one is tau we cannot add them therefore we have to find out equivalent twisting moment you see equivalent twisting moment you see what is this now presently don't worry about this we are going to study about this uh, in shaft in detail okay so because here again now this is the diameter of the shaft that you know we are finding this then okay so for the time being this formula also you take it for granted okay it is already there okay t e means t torque equivalent is equal to square root of n square plus t square m is a bending moment and t is twisting moment so m is a p into small l whole square and the capital T is P into capital L and the whole take the whole square of this. So it will come like this. Uh, P can be taken out and in this under the square root small L square plus capital L square. Okay. And also another you know again we have for shaft equation this equation also we are having. You see torque equivalent is pi by 16 uh, pi by 16 tau d1 cube you see this is similar to this equation that we have used here this equation see here testing moment is equal to pi by 16 tau d cube now uh, that was d cube this is d1 cube you see this is d1 cube okay so this is pi by 16 tau d1 cube okay so this is also twisting moment this is equivalent twisting moment this is also equivalent twisting moment you can equate these two when you equate these two the length small l may be uh, and also here the empirical relation uh, they are using small l can be taken as two times of l2 this is an empirical relation and then if l2 so l2 uh, l2 is already found out no so only one unknown will be remaining here uh, and that uh, uh, unknown is d1 now are you having uh, l distance l here yeah that distance should be given in the problem okay this small l capital l will be given p will be given or p you know if you don't know what is p you can uh, uh, assume it to be 300 newtons because with the uh, with the hand you can lift a load of around 30 kg 30 kg means 300 newtons or some strong people can lift 40 kg weight so that, that, like that so applying 300 newtons with the hand 1 kg is three, 10 newtons huh? 1 kg force is 10 newtons actually it is 9.81 we round it and say it is 10 newtons so this p if it is not given take 300 okay this l should be given small l also should be given in the problem okay this tau is the material property it should be given in the question or in the from the design data books you can find out only unknown will be in that case a d1 and uh, again this l no if it is not given in the problem you, you take it as two in times of l2 okay and then you find out what is d1 okay and okay we come to the final step the final step is oh, this is the design of the um, key again uh, so don't worry about the design of key now uh, actually design of key design of key means this is the key this one and this rectangular thing is called design of key this is again we will study when we come to shafts okay you see but one thing we have to find out is this capital b and this thickness t uh, that we have to find out you see for that we will use what is called as bending moment okay so here you see this is considered the the design of the lever is considered uh, is designed considering the bending uh, failure in bending stress bending because of the bending moment so bending stress sigma b is given as load upon uh, the, uh, the sigma b is given by um, bending moment upon section modulus m by z sigma b is equal to m by z so what is the bending moment 
bending moment is see what is the effort that is being applied with the hand p that 300 newtons i said no that and where is it being applied where is it being applied you see at a distance of l but you know you see uh, i'll show you you see this is uh, you see this is l but you know the the, the this thing the lever you see it is tapered like this so this b we are showing means where it, this b is it is at the periphery if it is breaking that will it should break here where here just at the periphery of the boss why it should break here because you know uh, you see the bending moment will be maximum at the largest distance here is the distance you see where the lever is almost finishing there it should break that is why this is given as taper because here the bending moment will be more as you move towards the application of effort the bending moment will be less so uh, so much of area is not necessary with the lesser uh, area itself the material will be able to withstand that bending stress therefore this taper is provided this taper is provided on one side on the other side you know it is of uniform cross section like this uniform higher uniform thickness okay and uh, so it is breaking here b means you know b is here they showed it be there okay so this this thing is how much distance this thing is you see that uh, total is uh, d2 no this distance is d2 that means this distance is d2 and this is um, d2 and uh, yeah let us come here uh, d2 by 2 half of it you see you see see this entire is d2 from the center how much is distance you see this l is up to the center line no so this much we have to reduce from this so this is capital l this is minus d2 by 2 so this is the distance this is where it will be breaking if it is breaking in um, if it is breaking in bending okay so that distance you have to take so P the effort in, is equal to length total length of the lever minus d2 by 2 that is where it is breaking so this will give you the bending moment and the section modulus section modulus you see how it is this section is a rectangular section is it not see if you cut it here you uh, you will see a rectangle and the, the uh, this is B and this is T so this will be uh, yeah you see section modulus for rectangular cross section is 1 upon 6 t b square i told you to which you have to put this square to t or b whichever is the bigger amount which whichever is the larger now b is larger than t so t b square so 1 upon 6 t b square okay so now you also you have m also you have z also you put this uh, in the in this equation sigma b and from this what you will get is you can find out uh, you can find out what is b you see only one equation two unknowns are there one is b another is t okay so you can say okay once you uh, you can use an empirical relation to reduce it to one equation so you can say um, see t is equal to b by 4 uh, or b by 6 like that you can take a empirical relation and then you can solve this problem so this this is how you will get it so now you see what all uh, things you have got you have designed you have designed first this diameter d you have designed and also you have designed uh, this uh, l2 you have designed t2 you have designed this d2 you have designed and uh, this l if it is not given you can find out uh, otherwise it will be given in the problem this capital l also will be given small l also will be given p will be given okay and this b you found out l you found out. okay now tell me what all you found out see this d you found out this d1 you found out this d2 you found out okay you see l is small l is given small l2 you found out and this t2 you found out and then this b that the, there is a width of the lever 
you found out and this t you found the thickness of the lever and these are the other proportions you know that those are according to the ergonomic considerations we need not worry okay see these are some other proportions like b by 2 this is given okay um, and some other things are given okay so with that you know the hand lever can be made this is how the design is you see you take you open your book come to some problem uh, and try to solve it and if any problem you ask me you can ask me through whatsapp or you can phone me also yeah, is it better you ask through whatsapp thank you